Gentrification is good and bad, depending on who you are. But it's an, uh, a kind of natural process. Like it's going to happen one way or another. Um, to to places in I don't know to particular places. You know, it's all about the area. It depends what happens. Like as soon as something starts, as soon as like a kind of cultural movement, usually like artists move in, um, and then that it gets clocked onto and it becomes like a thing. Um, and then it just get people want to make money. You know, we live in a capitalist society. It's part of it's part of the society. If you want to live here, it's part of it. Uh, my best mate's in Guatemala, so that's definitely a place I want to be now. Bali. <laughs> Bali? Yeah. Why is that? Because I feel like you kind of isolate yourself from... I don't know, I feel like I would be completely isolated from the rest of the world. It would just be my own tropical haven. Yeah, I'd want to live in a place where it's kind of central to the job I want to do. I kind of want to do a lot of um, graphic design and photography and stuff like that. So I'd want to live in a place like London or Brighton where like, you find a lot of like design companies. Yeah, the future for East London seems to be uh, push bikes and a cool haircut. Yeah. For, me, for, for me, it's here now, like South London, um, because it's still got a community. And that's what's really nice about it. And gentrification will change that. Brighton, eventually. Brighton. Oh, I'm actually happy in Brighton now. <laughs> yeah, no, I am really happy in Brighton. I think that's a bit um, of a fantasy idea because of obviously house prices have rise, especially in places like London where it's expensive. So um, I would say about 22. The deposit thing, we were hoping, well, We've been changing our mind. We were saying this year, last year, but now it's going to be next year. It's going to be next year. <laughs> so it's probably just going to keep being <laughs> next year, next year. Uh, if I had to put an age and I had to buy a flat, I would say maybe I'd be about 50 <laughs> at the rate that I'm going now. I mean, 20 would be popular. I want to build my own house. I want to actually, I've done carpentry before. There's courses, I'm from Ireland. There's courses in Ireland where you can, um, you can build your own house out of so many different recycled materials. The way kind of technology has evolved and has changed, it's kind of let you have more freedom where you want to live. Only in the past couple of months, like things have been really coming clear to me because everything people have been posting stuff on Facebook and yeah. my dad and so I don't know. I just it just seems like everything's really rubbish for our yeah. kind of generation. It just seems like it's almost impossible to try and find a way to yeah that's how it feels at the minute because otherwise I would have just I would have moved out ages ago yeah there's not many places where we could afford to open and try a vegan restaurant for example and and this has given us a great platform to let it work uh, it's good for young up and coming business people like we're the future and for us to pay a couple of hundred pound and have a three month little pop-up shop downstairs selling one-off items or whatever, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Like, um, So I think to get rid of a place like this would be a shame, but to invest in more things like this would be beneficial for everybody involved. Where else can you go on a Tuesday, Wednesday night and, and come and sit on benches that uh, are heated and that you can you jump you can bring out you can bang out your laptop and a lot of young social entrepreneurs live in live in East London and like this is a cool place for them to to come and hang out and meet like-minded people without the pressures of you know going to Starbucks using the free Wi-Fi and having to buy out a coffee when they can come and do it in the open air here and be in the heart of it. Uh, Packham's, Packham's happening, I reckon debt food's going to happen too, like it's happening too already. Um, it's going to spread outwards, man. But the inner cities, it's happening to the inner city now, like, um, like it's going to spread round. And I think with the overground as well, in London particularly, like the overground's just opened that up, you know, it's connected those spots. When you come here to work and the shop next door it comes and gives you the breakfast it's like it's your mom especially for the ones that lives for far away from home it's like if your mom is bringing you breakfast it's just yeah. you know it's just so nice uh, so there is always hope when there is um, when 
and as a people. Love and connection and friendship. This this pop up mall, for example, like this one, this us here in Fox Park, Shoreditch. This is the start of of many other um, box parks, hopefully, and ideas of this nature. So you know um, that social element of shops being next to each other, like. We we're giving all the other staffs, like all the other shops, like staff discounts, and we're interacting because we're so local. And it brings back that local locality, you know. Because when you go down the streets nowadays, like, or even you go down your down your down your own road, like people don't talk to who's next to them. They don't talk to their next door neighbours. Whereas here at Box Park, you're almost forced to to be socially interactive, and I think that. That, that's just so encouraged here and that's what I think is the way forward like social interaction you know less social media interaction more interpersonal interaction and I think um, this place provides that a simple look in the eyes and yeah. some reggae music and you feel the atmosphere you feel the culture yeah I would like to bring some to keep the, the culture and the, the heart yeah. from that he has so. And I was having a chat with my friend earlier, and he's, he's an MC from the area. He's grown up in Hackney all his life. Um, name's Rage, Chaser Status MC. And he was saying to me that he's been here, he's been around it, and he has experienced firsthand people being pushed out of this area. And he and I, for somebody who visits here a lot, would like to see more local businesses, more people I know opening barbershops more people we know opening clothing shops. We'd like almost the box park element, like the, the sort of cheaper rent and the, the short let short lets, like to actually be expanded into the into just the general nature of the whole of East London. Like because it's the cool place, because it's the cool hub, it's the cool capital, um, we there's there is a good market for young people to express themselves here. And I think that should be reflected in in certainly like prices of rent. There is always hope. There is always hope. Always hope. Uh, especially when when there are lots of hearts and there is lots of passion, there are lots of cultures that are just interacting with each other and it seems that they just love each other. Yeah. It's a, like a community here. Everybody n knows, you know, who is selling the ice cream next door and the other one and the next and the next one yeah. and um, it's, it's like a big family like it devalues the um, the already existing population exactly yeah. because development so like so to speak is you know the, the way forward but it always ends up being about definitely out with the and old and in with the new and that's not necessarily progression yeah, yeah. all the time and it's I not mean, necessarily a good progression either it's just the progression that it would take in this kind of society like the way yeah. it, the way it runs the values that we we hold mm. okay oh, road dude they're gonna they're gonna gents they're, they're gonna kick everyone out man. <laughs> so give us some free money yeah <laughs> give us some money nice. and give us give us all um a chance to grow and do like what we're doing here you know young business people opening shops with a passion yeah just giving life a go really that's, that's all I can say